Good evening, Community Baptist Church of Greater Milwaukee and all of our friends and the viewing audience. It is my pleasure and my honor to bring to you this evening the first word in our Holy Week services. If you don't mind, turn in your Bibles to the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 11, verses 15 through 18. And this is how the word of the Lord reads in the New International Version. Mark, chapter 11, verses 15 through 18. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple courts. He looked around at everything, but since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the 12. The next day, as they were leaving Bethany, Jesus was hungry. Seeing in the distance a fig tree in leaf, he went to find out if it had any fruit. When he reached it, he found nothing but leaves because it was, it was not the season for figs. Then he said to the tree, May no one ever eat fruit from you again. And his disciples heard him say it. On reaching Jerusalem, Jesus entered the temple courts and began driving out those who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves and would not allow anyone to carry merchandise through the temple courts. And as he taught them, he said, Is it not written, My house will be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you have made it a den of robbers. The chief priests and the teachers of the law heard this and began looking for a way to kill him, for they feared him because the whole crowd was amazed at his teaching. This is God's word for God's people, and it is blessed. For a few moments, I'd like to share with you from the subject, turning the tables in the temple. That is turning the tables in the temple. Jesus had already engaged in a reconnaissance mission in the temple that Sunday evening after his triumphal entry into Jerusalem. As it mentioned in verse 11 that he looked around in the temple, but because it was getting late, he returned to Bethany, which was a short distance away from Jerusalem with his disciples. The next narrative move and chronological move on Monday Amen. When Jesus entered into Jerusalem, he saw a fig tree just outside Jerusalem and he was hungry and he thought he might find figs available to satiate his hunger. The tree was in leaf, meaning that perhaps uh, it should have been blooming and offering fruit also. So it had all the potential of satisfying his hunger. But once he arrived there, he found that the tree, although in leaf, was not bearing fruit. 
And Jesus did something that he does not do a lot in his earthly ministry. He cursed the tree. Jesus came to be, bring blessings, not curses. But in this case, he cursed the fig tree. And let me say as an aside, Jesus never cursed people. Amen. Jesus was not a cursing savior. He was a blessing savior. But this tree was representative of Israel and the Israelite tradition. They were supposed to produce fruit for God's kingdom, produce fruit in essence in representing God's presence in the world and bringing Gentiles, uh, at least representing to the nations, their covenant relationship with God. But according to this, this incident, it, 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 it foretold of the fact that Israel had not produced the kind of fruit that God was expecting. So Jesus cursed the tree and this foreshadowed, if you will, his activity in the temple because Jesus would also condemn the temple and the practices taking place in the temple. So he enters on that day into the temple and he is displeased by what he sees. I can imagine how Jesus feels because sometimes I'm sure not only myself, but other pastors enter into the house of the Lord and we are very displeased by what we see a time when individuals should be prepared to worship and give God their best. It seems as if our mind is everywhere else, but on the things of God, on worship and on giving God our best. So I can understand how he feels, but, but listen, we, we will not turn over benches <laughs> and tables. We let Jesus do that. But interestingly, when he entered into the temple, he had already looked the evening before, observed what was going on, and he was displeased by what he saw in the temple. So what did Jesus do? He provided a prophetic demonstration. That is, Jesus turned over the tables and chairs of the money changers and those who sold doves because he said in this text that you have changed my father's house. My house, my father's house, amen, shall be called a house of prayer for all people, but you have made it into a den of robbers. What is Jesus saying here today? Well, Jesus, as well as all the other participants in the temple on that day, are most likely in the court of the Gentiles. This was the primary public space uh, where anyone can enter, Jew or Gentile. It was the public space where individuals were able to purchase their animals for sacrifice and where they would exchange their coinage of Roman uh, money for that of uh, the temple coinage where they could uh, by their sacrificial animals. But apparently, uh, the money changers were not providing fair and honest exchange. And this so angered Jesus that he turned tables over and would not allow anyone to carry anything through the temple. Instead, he said, this is a teaching moment. And so he began to instruct them that God's house should be a house of prayer for all peoples. That means regardless of your background, your nationality, your age, your gender, that, that God's house is for all people. And in God's house, God expects God's people to be fair dealing. Amen. I can tell you some stories about some saints that, that are not fair dealing. When it comes to money, boy, saints, they, they have a different attitude. I'll never forget back in the day, a young man who, who was a painter and he had a big job and I was a part of a, a Wednesday evening prayer group. And so he asked a couple of individuals there, what, did they want to participate with him? He would hire them to help him paint this house. However, 
A week later at the prayer meeting, the two individuals were complaining because the painter refused to pay them what he agreed upon. Sometimes we make a lot of promises until we get money in our hands. But this same brother said, I, I, I didn't take a, a lunch pail to work with me because the Bible was my food. So he said, I just meditate on the word of God. All he had was the word of God in his mouth. But as soon as he got hands on his money, he was not fair dealing with his brothers and sisters. Saints, we cannot be like that. God expects us to be fair in all of our dealings. So Jesus, looking at what was going on, became upset and angry. Sure, it was a prophetic moment. Jesus wanted to demonstrate uh, to the people uh, uh, just uh, uh, what was foreshadowed because the temple would soon be destroyed. But at any rate, uh, 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 we're used to seeing a Jesus who is humble and loving and compassionate and patient. This is a very different image of Jesus that we are not accustomed to. Jesus who gets angry, a Jesus who turns over tables. Jesus commanded the space, allowed no one to move throughout the temple. This is an image of Jesus in his last week of earthly ministry. And sometimes when you have a job to do and time is drawing short, you have no time for games, no time for amusement. Jesus was making a point. Why? Why was Jesus making a point? See, Jesus came at a time when history was, was, was turning. A new age was on the horizon. And Jesus wanted to, uh, by his prophetic demonstration, indicate that the worship of God would no longer require animal sacrifice. Yeah, they were in there buying doves and calves and, and those who had the money to afford it, even larger cattle. But Jesus's demonstration indicated that God was about to turn the ages. Jesus turned over tables, uh, 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 as I said, uh, uh, turning over tables in the temple was also a turning over of the age. He foreshadowed that. Also, Jesus's demonstration foreshadowed that worship of God uh, would advance beyond just a nation and ethnicity, that everyone would be equally accepted as a part of God's covenant people. So, his, his, his condemnation of the temple foreshadowed what God was about to do. If you remember the gospel of John chapter four, when Jesus had the conversation with the woman from Samaria, she said, well, we worship on Mount Gerizim and you all worship in Jerusalem. He said, listen, the time is coming where uh, the true worshipers would neither worship there in Jerusalem or <laughs> amen on Mount Gerizim. He said, but the true worshipers will worship God in spirit and in truth. And that's what God is looking for among God's people. Finally, Jesus is turning over of the tables represented a turn in salvation history. Hans Konzelman, a German scholar, helps us to understand uh, uh, salvation history. Salvation history, according to Hans Konzelmann in his, his commentary on Luke, but however, he mentions, uh, it's appropriate here for Mark, that the first dispensation was between God and Israel. God was forming a, a people whom God had chosen for God's self to represent God's will in the world. The second stage of salvation history was the ministry of Jesus. And, and, and Jesus's ministry was coming to a close. So the third stage of salvation history would be that of the Holy Spirit. So, so at this moment, as I mentioned, there, there was a, a cusp, a, 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 a turning of the ages that was about to take place. And even here, Jesus indicated what the Holy Spirit would produce in the world. That is, when the spirit falls upon individuals, it does not care what color your flesh is. God said, my spirit will fall upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. 
and your young men shall dream dreams. So when and your your male slaves and your female slaves shall also receive the spirit. To me, this is comparable to what Paul said in Galatians 328 that in Christ there is no longer Jew or Greek, slave or free, male or female. So God was doing something new in the world and Jesus is uh, turning tables in the, temp in the temple was turning the tables of time. But whenever you engage in uh, uh, activity that challenges the uh, supposed political authority, things can become tenuous. Whenever you challenge the status quo. So when Jesus engaged in uh, uh, turning over tables in the temple, the religious authorities became afraid because he had influence over the people that they did not have. But not only that, they became afraid because they could not control him. And what you cannot control, you seek to destroy. And so they came together and commiserated on how they could kill Jesus. But can I tell you something? You cannot destroy God's plan. You may kill an individual, but you cannot destroy God's plan. And as a matter of fact, they were not aware that God's plan was to send God's son and Jesus was the son of God. They may have destroyed his body, but they could not destroy God's plan because God's plan was to raise him up on the third day. And so I'm grateful to die for this demonstration of God's power, that God can turn tables even in your life. Those who said you would not be anything, it wouldn't amount to nothing. Well, God can turn the tables on that. You can look at your life and say, it's not going, my life is not going anywhere. It seems as if the harder I work, the further I get behind. But listen, when you put your hand in God's unchanging hand, God can turn the tables on your situation. So I thank God for a table turning God that can turn things around for your good. May God bless and may God keep you. Eternal God, we thank you for this first night of Holy Week when Jesus went into the temple to carry out his father's business. I pray that someone tonight may hear this message and find a word of inspiration for their lives that God can turn it around. This is my prayer in Jesus name. Amen.